probability of rolling a die and getting a rabbit. <laughs> Go. That's not that's not gonna happen, right? I'm not a magician, but musician. I am a musician. I'm not a magician. You can't just make a rabbit appear from a, a dice. All right? That doesn't make sense. So something that cannot happen is an impossible event would have probability zero. With that in mind, what's the probability equal to 1 imply? What now? Well, this is possible. That's not equal to 1. That's certainly possible, right? You can get two girls and a boy, or what did I say? Two boys and a girl. You can get that. So probability of 1 means it's more than possible. It's certainly more than impossible. Oh, duh. <laughs> probability of 1 means more than just possible. What's it mean? will happen. It's certain. It's certain. If I say there's a hundred percent probability that you're going to have homework tonight. Oh. <laughs> well, that sucks, huh? That means that it's certain you are going to have homework tonight. hundred percent probability P equals one means a certain event. It'd be like this. Roll a die. What's the probability of getting one, two, three, four, five, or six? You are going to get one of those numbers, it's certain. Also, one other thing. It's called the law of large numbers. If you want to write down law of large numbers, go for it. This is what this means. I want you to think on this. You remember flipping the coin? Well, actually, we just kind of pretend to flip a coin. If, we, if you took your coin out and you flipped it ten times, are you for sure going to get, let's say it's a weight, a nice, evenly weighted die, so the probability of getting heads and tails is 50-50. If you flip it 10 times, are you for sure going to get five heads and five tails? It's possible you could get only three heads and seven tails, right? That's, that's quite possible. If you flip it a million times, you're probably not going to get exactly 500,000 heads and 500,000 tails. You're probably not going to get that, but as you increase the number, the observed probability is going to get very close to the classical probability. For instance, if you flip it 10 times, you might not get 5 and 5. If you flip it a million times, it's going to be pretty close to 50-50. You might get five, uh, 490,000 and 510,000, that uh, ratio. If you increase it to infinity, observed probability will actually approach, which means it's going to become classical probability. So those two things will increase. Does that make sense to you? The more you repeat a procedure, the closer observed will be to uh, classical theory. You can see this in the poll, I mean the polling that, that we did, like the, the survey. If you go out there and you start polling five people, are they going to be very representative of the population of the United States of America? Probably not. If you increase it to a thousand, is it more representative? If you increase it to three hundred million, is it more representative? That's like almost everybody. We have like 307 million people here. So as you keep increasing your observed probability, your observed um, results, it's going to approach classical probability. So that's the law of large numbers. As you increase, or sorry, the more procedures repeated, the closer observed will be to classical probability. Procedures repeated, the closer observed probability will get to classical probability. Just law of large numbers. The more you do something, the more your observations will mimic um, the theory. Or the more that what does happen will look like what should happen. Now we're going to show what we talked about today. Do you have any questions on, on, on any of this stuff? The law of large numbers, or why probabilities are between 0 and 1, or 
why probably the zero is impossible or one is, is definite, it's going to happen. Or the difference between subjective, um, classical, or observed probabilities. Do you have any questions on those things? Do those ring a bell in your head? Does it make sense for you? Yes? Okay. So when we say complementary events, what we're talking about in this class are events which are mutually exclusive. Have you ever heard of that, that phrase, mutually exclusive? Have you ever heard of it? Never heard of it? Mutually exclusive is, is, is this idea, if I can say it quickly, mutually exclusive. Some of these words are hard. It says if you're in one group, you're automatically discounted for being in another group. You can't be in both at the same time. You have to be either here or you have to be here. Um, unless you really, well, unless you're a strange dressing person, you're either going to wear shoes or you're going to wear sandals, right? You're not going to wear both shoes and sandals at the same time, I hope, because that would just look ridiculous. Unless you deal with those kind of Tiva looking things, which are kind of shandles, shoe sandals, <laughs> whatever. Uh, sh would it be shadows? Sh 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 sandal <laughs> shoes? Whatever. Anyway, so you, you're not going to wear both shoes and sandals at the same time, right? You're either wearing shoes or you're wearing sandals. Those groups are generally mutually exclusive. And so that's what that, that term means. It means that you're either in one group or you're in another. There's no crossover, basically. So when we talk about complementary events, what complementary events are, are two events which are mutually exclusive. I'll, I'll give you some better examples that relate to this class in just a second. By the way, when we say complementary, I did spell it wrong. It's not with the I. It's not like compliment. Like, you look nice today. So these events are not sitting there going, you're such a good looking event. Oh, thank you, event. I feel like a good looking event today. So I appreciate that compliment. It's not that type of compliment. It's, it's, this, it's the definition of they're mutually exclusive. One doesn't happen while the other one happens. So they, they cannot happen at the same time. So complementary events. These are events which are mutually, mutually exclusive. Wow, I'm having a hard time with that. Mutually. I, have, I promise it's mutually. I can't say that word, just not today. Mutually exclusive. The most basic definition I can give you for mutually exclusive is two events which can't happen at the same time. Let's talk about just a, a basic example of that. Okay, let's bring back our dice, the six-sided, just standard, standard die. Okay, um, I say, okay, I want you to roll the die. Can you get both a two and a five when you roll the die once, one time? Can you get both a two and a five? Those would be mutually exclusive events. One event would be rolling a two, the other event would be rolling a five. They obviously cannot happen at the same time when you're rolling the die one time. That would be mutually exclusive. Okay. Uh, same thing like drawing out some cards. Drawing out a heart and drawing out a diamond, if those were your events, would be mutually exclusive events. They won't happen at the same time. Remember, we're talking about one event, one procedure at a time. Not like, draw out three cards. Can you get both a heart and a diamond? Yeah, you could in that case. But for one card, those would be mutually exclusive. I you have to understand that, that concept. Okay. Okay, so what, what is a compliment? First, some notation. If we have some event, so let's say we have event A. The complement of event A Complement of event A 
is denoted it looks a whole lot like a mean. It's not, but that's how we write the complement. And here shall say this. If we're talking about the complement, the complement of something, you know, the complement of an event, is all the outcomes that occur that don't accomplish your event. I'll, I'll repeat that for you. So if we have event A over here, and we want to talk about the complement, this is called the complement of A, uh, what this says is this is all the outcomes which don't satisfy this event. Does that make sense to you? It's pretty much everything else. That's what the complement is. So the complement of event A is, is denoted complement of A, and is all the outcomes when, a, when event A does not occur. some reason this helps me to remember it. I don't know why this helps me remember it, but maybe this will help you remember it. When you see this, it's kind of like a minus sign. Minus to me means not or bad. Not. So if this is our event A, this means not A. So everything else besides A. All the outcomes that don't make A. You with me on that? That's how I remember it. Don't know if that helps you, but hopefully that, that does. So let's do an example. Let's say that my event, let's go back to the, um, the dice rolling thing. Okay. The event is, we're going to look to see if we can roll a 5. So rolling a 5. That's our event. So if we called this event A, so if that was our A, the complement would be A with that line on top of it, or the complement of A. What is the complement of rolling a 5 on a die? What do you think? Complement of rolling a 5. What else could happen, but in way to answer this question, what else could happen when you roll a die that doesn't make a 5? What else could you get, basically? Could you get a 7? That's one die. Could you seven? What else could you get besides a 5? 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. So anything besides the 5 would be the complement. You all stated 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. Perfect. So the complement of rolling a 5 is not rolling a 5, or rolling not 5. For instance, what you all, what you all stated here, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. That's a complement. So the complement, the complementary events here work so that they, they add together to create the whole sample space. So if you're talking about two complementary events, it's got to be either one or the other. They're mutually exclusive. But together, they make up the whole thing. Can you get anything else besides a five or a one through six? That's why they're complementary, because together they make up the whole sample space, right? You can't get a zero. You can't get a seven or anything else. This is everything that could possibly happen. They're just in two groups, complementary events. You have the five, you have everything else. That's the complement of rolling a five. We understand the complement. feel okay about that so far. Good. Now let's talk about the probability of these things. So what's the probability 